my people, how on a day? <laughs> I don't know why I decided to start this way, but I officially welcome you to this episode of So This Happened, where we get to highlight and reveal stories that made the buzz recently. My name is Adebinte Olajiga, your friendly neighborhood reporter. Let's start with the first story. Guys, the hardship in this country is beginning to make people do unbelievable things. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Let me just tell you the story. So a man named Israel Emmanuel planned his own kidnap in order to get his father to pay one million naira ransom. After the successful operation, he decided to report his collaborators to the police for cheating him. <laughs> Any which way, this is where the story gets interesting. He got himself into trouble after he reported his collaborators to the police for receiving 1 million naira from his father, but lied to him that his father paid 500,000 naira. The other accomplice, named Fatasi Kuko and Zaka no, who were also picked up, confessed to the crime. They said Israel was kept for six days in a faraway village in Mubi within the Mubi North local government area and later Mubi Metropolis where Israel spent another two days before the ransom was paid. A third accomplice, Abdullahi Muhammad, is currently at large. It was also reported that after collecting one million naira as ransom, the two friends declared only 500,000 naira as the amount paid by Israel's father. <laughs> After collecting a share of the declared 500,000 naira, Israel returned home and told his parents that he was released unharmed. However, he discovered that one million naira was paid for his freedom. <laughs> he could not contain the betrayer from his accomplice. He lodged a complaint with the Maraba Mobi Police Division, which swung into action, investigated the matter, and got the perpetrators arrested. It's obvious that people can go great lengths just to make money. <laughs> I just hope the guy doesn't arrange the kidnap of his family out of desperation. Moving on to the second story. A woman has been arrested for killing her husband after she claims she doesn't like marriage. Hmm. This is really sad. A 25-year-old housewife, Fatima Abubakar, has been arrested by the police in Borno for allegedly killing her husband, Goni Haba, with poison. On investigation, Umar, who is the chief imam in the area, said the victim said he returned from the mosque when the suspect, who was a second wife, allegedly poisoned his food. The commissioner of police, Borna State, explained that as soon as Goni started eating, his condition deteriorated. However, the victim was immediately rushed to the state specialist hospital, where he was given medical attention, but unfortunately, he later passed on. The police quickly rushed to arrest the suspect, but were met by aggravated youth who intended to kill the suspect. She confessed to the crime and revealed she had made up her mind to kill her husband. She said, and I quote, I never wanted the marriage. Goni was my second husband. I got separated with my first husband because I don't like marriage. Anytime I woke up with the fact that I am married, it pisses me off. At some point, I had to run to my parents to demand an end to the marriage, but they always sent me back asking me to be patient. Two months after I gave birth to my child, I ran away and slept in an uncompleted building for about two weeks. I later returned to my husband's house. Not that he doesn't treat me well. We were also not quarreling. We are two in the household. I am a second wife and I have been married to him since 2021 but I just don't like when any man comes near me. I don't really know what is wrong with me. Even now that I am speaking, I don't really feel that I was the one who killed him. Hmm. The death of this story can't be imagined. Can we say she was forced into marriage? I mean, she's just 25, with her second husband again. <laughs> I don't support her actions, but I feel she needs assistance. Kindly share your thoughts with me in the comment section. Finally, on So This Happened, let's talk about what's happening in Lagos as Danford drivers commenced a seven days boycott of Lagos roads on Monday. I mean, so are they trying to say that this week there's no Walekbalo change, yo? Tobani change, my Okay, on a serious note, 
The drivers during a press briefing before the commencement of the strike stated that we are saddened that despite our dedication to our work, we have been subjected to indiscriminate extortion, violent harassment by the management. As commercial drivers in Lagos State under the ages of the Joint Drivers Welfare Association of Nigeria, we are left with no choice than to embark on a seven days protest and boycott of services across multiple and excessive extortion by the management of parks and garages in the state. In as much as this strike has caused some discomfort for commuters, I feel this boycott makes so much sense as the cost of transportation affects cost of goods and services, cost of living, which has also skyrocketed in Lagos State as a result of the effects of motor parks, excessive and illegal ticketing and tolling at almost every bus stop in the state. I mean, the strike makes sense to me. What about you? Thank you so much for watching. And now we've come to the end of this episode. Be free to share your comments on any of the stories. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on all our social media handles for by the second news update. Until next time, my name is Adebimpe Olajiga, your friendly neighborhood reporter.